Transport and Public Health today paid a visit to injured victims of a car accident that claimed the lives of three youngsters at the Nkole some 28 kilometers to Ayos. The youngsters were returning from a holiday camp organized by the Tourism Ministry in Melong, Mungo Division of the Littoral Region. Three of the kids severely injured are currently receiving treatment at the Yaoundé Central Hospital while the rest with minor injuries are lodged at the Saint Jean the at the Saint Jean de uh, Ventura Spiritual Center at Mvodi. Constantine Mbom witnessed the pathetic situation and put together the following report. A very pathetic situation involving children. The state is very touched. The government shows compassion by sending these three ministers to visit the accident survivors. The accident happened at about 11 p.m. Saturday at Nkolesung, some 28 kilometers before Ayos. Their bus collided with a heavy-duty truck and three persons died on the spot. Among the, the dead, one of our youth who were on vacation in Konsamba, my colleagues and myself to see uh, what are the states of the injured people. Those with minor or no injuries are presently at the St. Jean the 23rd Spiritual Center at Mvoli. Eleven of them, nine boys, two girls. The delegation dispatch also made a stop there to console, comfort the traumatized children. The Minister of State, Minister of Tourism and Leisure and his colleagues of Health and Transport took time to comfort the kids. A standby medical team is there for any emergency. The children were from a holiday camp in Melong, the Mungo Division of the Littoral Region, organized by the Minister of Tourism. They were heading to their respective regions, the East, Adam One North and Far North after a successful holiday camp before the unfortunate incident occurred. The Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education and elite of the Mayo Danai Division have urged the youths in the division to align to education, cultural and sports activities made available to them instead of engaging in deviant behaviors. The Minister was speaking in Marwa at the launch of the second edition of Operation Purposeful Holidays in the presence of the Senior Divisional Officer for Mayo Danai, Manu Digir. Henry Tatwe Kambi report from CRTV Far North. COVID-19 has rendered many Cameroonian youths unemployed and has also dealt a severe blow on some of their income-generating activities. That is why the 13th edition of the Cameroon Youth Forum is focusing on the impact of COVID on youths and ways of helping them to break through in such tough moments. They are not considered as problems but as solutions and those solutions are found with them. This is also an occasion for uh, civic, uh, moral and entrepreneurial rearmament. Enlightening youth to see like entrepreneurs instead of continuously waiting for a job will be another key subject on the table. The main objective is to change their mindset because most of them are frustrated and they are not loving the country anymore. So we give them the opportunity to see that this country is beautiful and there is a lot to do. The youth will also be expected to propose solutions to some of the applied in the week-long forum. The scarcity of CFA franc coins is said to hinder the smooth transaction of business deals around the country. In supermarkets and local markets, sellers have no choice than to issue receipts or simply propose an item equivalent to the balance of the customers. Rahana Tusali in the following report presents the situation and says the phenomenon must be looked into. It has become a nightmare for buyers and sellers. They have to juggle to get coins on East Street. The scarcity of coins leaves them with no choice but to be jugglers. I come here yesterday to buy that product, but it's in half 350 francs. So I decided to, to come back this or today. There seemed to be no way out, but find the coins at all costs. The situation is still worse because there is no coins. And you know, we traders without coins, we cannot work. Coins is like blood uh, in the body, talking about the economy. When I don't have coins, I can propose to take uh, maybe one packet of match, one sweet, what we call bonbon, or biscuit. 
Coins are more scarce than buyers and are cherished more to the point where traders would rather lose customers than lose the coins. If there's no change, I can send the customer away. If customer want to buy something, maybe 300 to back 200, I can try and back the 200. If it's more than, whether something 200 to back uh, 300, I cannot give 300. The scarcity of coins has upset the whole business setup, setting new rules and agendas. The creation of a producer's desk for cocoa and coffee growers has brought to light the quality imperative without which the initiative may not attain the expected objective. In a series which we begin tonight, we take a look at the different tools which will be needed to attain the cocoa economic agenda while meeting producers' concerns. Amongst them is awarding premiums to farmers who supplied the market with grade one cocoa beans a government-backed exercise that began this year. Clarice Aritakang reports. Coco is one of the greatest contributors to Cameroon's agricultural gross domestic product. The local cultivation and transformation of the cash crop places the country amongst the great producers of the commodity. Encouraging the efforts of farmers is therefore key in order to respect the quality requirement. This is the raison d'etre of the cocoa premiums, the first of which were handed out this year. The visual quality. The provision of child labor. We have also the provision of uh, destruction of the forest. The involvement of uh, the youth and uh, the women. On all those aspects, I can say that we are uh, on the good way. 70 francs for a kilogram of premium cocoa beans left some farmers with tens of thousands of CFA francs each and others who counted more than a million CFA francs for their work. In the southwest, littoral, center, east, west and south regions, labor was rewarded. We have uh, undertaken to build, to construct what we call uh, excellent center post harvest uh, quality. This is also uh, the, an element, an aspect to help us to improve the quality. Selling more in local and foreign markets implies putting quality at the fore. This is the challenge cocoa growers are expected to tackle while the state gives them a financial push. We take you down south where the first ever harbor commissioner of the Kribi Deep Sea Port has officially taken command. Police Commissioner Manfred Francois Ekindingwen, who was charged with the duty of fighting maritime trafficking, clandestine immigration, amongst others, was commissioned this Friday in Kribi by the Regional Delegate for National Security for the South, Nicola Hubezo Mbame. Cyril Mwanzeke attended the event and brought back this report. The fight against illegal immigration, banditry, drug and human trafficking, plus the security of the roughly 26,000 acres the Kribi Deep Sea Port covers are some of the challenges that are which the 48-year-old Pioneer Harbour Commissioner Manfred Francois Ekindinquen installed at the Kribi Deep Sea Port this Friday. Speaking at the installation ceremony in the presence of stakeholders and elites of the Ocean Division, the South Regional Delegate for National Security Hubert Nicolas Zombana called on the newly commissioned officer to ensure good relationship with his collaborators, keep in mind that the safety of material and persons working at the deep sea port is his primary responsibility. The commissioner on his part expressed gratitude to the head of state and promised to do his best to consolidate security at the port. I thank the head of state for the confidence bestowed on me. We shall do our all for everything to work smoothly. At a time when the Kribi Deep Sea Port aims to double its performances as one of the leading ports in the Central African sub-region, the input of the Harbour Commissioner will enhance security and productivity. Prior to his appointment, Manfred Francois Kindinquen served as Police Commissioner with duty post in Yaoundé. Over in the littoral Cameroon's waterway at the Douala seaport can receive larger and deeper ships than before. The access channels into the port have been deepened thanks to the acquisition of the country's own dredging equipment. A nationalization of the port's dredging activity, which has permitted the state to cut dredging costs from 12 billion CFA francs paid to multinationals 
to 6.9 billion CF francs today. Details on this new infrastructure with our reporter Beatrice Ngum. At sea since January 31, 2021, the two dredging equipment, codenamed Vigilance and Momandara, have made 635 trips this far and cleared an enormous volume of sediment, 1,905,000 cubic meters. The suction dredger in operation dredges the channels, while the stationary suction dredger dredges the water bodies and the feet of the quays of the port. A nationalization of dredging activity in the port of Dua This port lives with dredging. This port for one year we will no longer have all the vessel and that is, has a big impact in our, on our economy. With the acquisition of the dredgers, floating and land-based equipment, government will no longer spend fabulous sums of money to multinationals. In 15 years, the state disbursed CFA 156 billion for the exercise. With the dredgers, it's adapting its infrastructure to welcome larger and deeper ships. Sea channels depth monitoring and surveillance that a local team is being trained to take the relay. No, no one on, under the pipe is safe there. This type of ship is very advanced and very new. We pass our knowledge to them, information about the system to them. So we have to take handover correctly, safely. Dredging will be done throughout the year as the local team has been trained to deal with the dredging process and with the maintenance of the dredgers. Seaports will now talk the upcoming Feast of Sacrifice to announce that with less than two days to the Feast of the Ram, some of some tellers in the nation's capital are working tirelessly to meet the demands of their customers. Others complain of a drop in the number of customers in this year's feast due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A reporter, Alice Mbe, visited some tailoring workshops around Yaoundé to catch sight of the atmosphere and put together this report. In this tailoring workshop at the Bukuteri neighborhood in Yaoundé, Valentine has intensified his activities in order to satisfy his customers. He says the Tabaski is a busy one for him. There is a bit of change as uh, compared to the past years. We are doing everything. We are working day and night in order to satisfy our customers. Other tellers confess that because of the situation of the COVID-19, most people are not feasting. As such, only a few customers come around. Normally, during the feast of the Ramadan, there is no pressure as we have few clients. Our prices remain the same. A shirt is between four to 4,500 francs saving. While waiting for the feast day, dressmakers are exhibiting various designs and models to attract as many customers as possible. Muslim faithful have been traveling to the northern regions ahead of the Feast of the Sacrifice with the hope of celebrating with family back home. If Formoso spoke to a few of them at the Yaoundé Central Railway Station and they said they were taking advantage of the long weekend to celebrate with family back home. His report. At the Old Town Sheep Market in Bamenda, there is variety of sheep, but vendors lament that what is available is limited compared to the number of sheep in the market before the social political crisis. They usually come from Banso, uh, Ndu, Nkambe, uh, uh, Kom, but this year we, do, we have uh, just this one of uh, Momo Division. There is a scarcity, but the most cherished and solicited ones are the healthy male ram without wounds nor suffering from any disease. This Muslim residing at Old Town Bamenda is one of the faithfuls searching for only the best to sacrifice to Allah against all odds. The sacrifice for, for the sake of Allah is more than what you have in you. Aside the poor man pigeantry, many Muslims plan to give the feast of Ramadan this Tuesday. Prayers intensify in the different mosques. Well, sorry for that. Big up. That was rather survey banter reporting on the 
hopes and aspirations of Muslims in the Northwest region to celebrate the feast in grand style, not to be damp, uh, even though they don't want to be their spirits to be dampened, as ship vendors complain of a scarcity and a consequent increase in the price of the ruminant. We now go back to if Formiso who says Muslim faithful have been traveling to the northern regions ahead of the feast of the sacrifice with the hope of celebrating with family back home. He spoke to a few of them at the Yaoundé Central Railway Station and they said they were taking advantage of the long weekend to celebrate in the village with their family. His report. A central station clock tower takes a watch as a steady flow of passengers eager to travel home take a queue. The hope to celebrate the feast of the sacrifice. Praying with the family is of great importance to me, he tells me. It's full of emotions, meeting relatives and fellow Muslims I have not seen in a long time, he adds. I'm going to Ngaundere to, to enjoy my small brother who invited me to come and uh, enjoy Tabaski with him. A few minutes before departure, passengers hold on to their luggages as though their lives emanate from it. They will go through security and have them checked and packed up. A railway station in silhouette at sunset, a few surrender the journey into the hands of Allah. Yeah, a couple of families are traveling the distance, at least a 12-hour journey to meet loved ones up north. It's sure going to be a feast to remember. At the sound of the whistle, its horn pierces through the night. The seven-wagon train 191 is hauled by a steam locomotive. The rails squeal and it's 7.50, take off time. The Archbishop of Yaoundé, His Grace Jean Barga, has called on Christians of the St. Joseph Parish in Oja to deepen their faith in Christ. He was speaking in a pontifical mass today while consecrating the newly constructed parish. He equally used the occasion to call on the parish priest to work in collaboration with Christians for the growth of the church. Roman Kenyi tells us more. The doors of St. Joseph Parish, Oja, are now open for Catholic Christians. In a pontifical mass, His Grace Jean Barga tells faithful to rely on faith to build God's house. The gospel is gotten from Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 34. Some believers then receive the sacrament of confirmation and marriage. The newly constructed parish has also been consecrated with a pioneer parish priest, Emmanuel Tade Abena, age 56, and joined to work hand in gloves with Christians and the parish council. The church is good as a big house, but the importance is that our faith, because by our faith we can build many, many churches after. So I would like to thank all the faithful to this uh, capacity to preserve their faith and to, to express it by this great gift as a church and I hope for them great success in the future. Until now, the parish was considered a Eucharistic center attached to St. Peter Parish, Mesamendungu. The edifice was erected in the space of four years on a piece of land donated to the church by the family of Amugumbarga. Meanwhile, the 2021 Annual General Conference of the Eglise Presbyterian Cameroonese Yaoundé has ended today with the call on Christians and youths in particular to remain hopeful to God in every situation. The call was made by the presiding prelate, the Reverend Yemek Um Remong, during a church service to commit the lives of faithful and the church to God the Almighty. Victor Siga reports on the colorful events. <laughs> Colors are Christians from the south, center, and north consistory of the Eglise Presbyterian Camerounaise Yaoundé. They have gathered at Eglise Presbyterian Camerounaise Mesa 2 on the occasion of the closing ceremony of the 2021 Annual General Conference. This annual gathering bring together all the youth. We are in the midst of the Christian Youth Fellowship, the so-called Chapé, in the Yaoundé Presbytery. On this occasion, we try to gather all the youth. We go on the field to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. During the week-long meeting, 
guardians improved on the spiritual lives of participants through religious and cultural activities like Bible studies and craft works. We are very satisfied with uh, this uh, general conference of our youth. This year's edition took place under the theme, Back to Your Roots. In more church news, a seven-day convention of Eglise Centre de Redemption et de Prière rounded off today in Yawundi. The closing church service, officiated by the Reverend Bernard Teking, witnessed the consecration of the new church building in Efulan and the ordination of elders and deacons, as well as prayers and testimonies of the great gesture of God to the Christians. Ewana Epule has details of the report. Christians of the Eglise Centre de Redemption et de Prière, EPCC, converge at Nsam Efulan branch of the church in Yaoundé for a one-week annual convention. The main message of this uh, convention was who will rule the stone. Many people live their life and they are wondering but who will take away this stone on my way? Who will take this obstacle? Because a stone can represent an obstacle. That obstacle that prevents you from getting to your glory, from getting to that position, from becoming something. A special church service to close the convention officiated by Reverend Bernard Teking in the presence of Reverend Dr. Joseph Eyong witnessed the consecration of the new church building and the ordination of some Christians as deacons, evangelists and missionaries. On the occasion, men, women and children who receive graces of forgiveness of sins and blessings from God presented their testimonies. Meanwhile, the Christians also prayed for peace in Cameroon and the end of the health crisis in the world. On to our series on Cameroon, my beautiful country. Tonight we take you to the southwest region to discover the famed Kumba bread, which inhabitants of the region say is one of the best from the traditional bakeries of that part of the country. They say it is being eaten by all classes of people, given its refined quality and savory taste. Ethel Edimo Mbela of our Southwest Regional Bureau is our lady on that feature story. This is the famous Kumba bread. Even though it is being baked in Mboya, Mutengene, Tiko, among other towns, people will always refer to it as Kumba bread because of its rectangular shape and size. Concerning Kumba bread, it has a lot of companies, yes, but the ones we say are actually SB and abs but there are other companies like kbs and oez there are a lot of companies that produces kumba bread actually here in boya we actually said ones from boya and from Mutengene. today kumba bread is more than a foodstuff and it has become a mythical product which many can't do without i like kumba bread because first of all kumba bread is cheap so most people like kumba bread and have the soft while you're drinking with you you have good appetite Tight, not like the other ones, and you have good order from the bread when you're eating the kumba bread. Oh, I love kumba bread because the bread is so tasty, very nice. Yes, it's well baked. I eat about three times a week. I like eating kumba bread in the morning, take my breakfast. It can keep me up to about 12, 12 p.m., 1 p.m. Thanks to these qualities, Kumba bread is not only enjoyed by people of the Southwest region, it is much sought after in different parts of the country, reason why each time people leave the Southwest region, they also get it as one of the goodies for their families. I urge you once again, to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Health personnel in Nangai Boko have been encouraged to have themselves vaccinated against the coronavirus. The call was made by the management of the Nangai Boko District Hospital, reminding those still reluctant to 
make use of the different vaccines available in Cameroon. For more, let's now join Baldwin Sama and his guest, Dr. Alfred Kotondo, at the Nangai Boko District Hospital. Good evening, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Freddy Tabison. We are still at uh, the uh, Nanga Eboko District Hospital, where today we talk about uh, the vaccination of uh, health personnel in this uh, hospital. How many of them so far have uh, been vaccinated and how has the exercise been unfolding? Yeah, we discussed that tonight with uh, Dr. Alfred Kotondo, who is a general practitioner here at the Nanga Eboko District Hospital. Good evening to you, Dr. Alfred Good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening, sir. Tell us uh, what assessment so far can you make uh, for the vaccination of a half uh, personnel in this hospital? Concerning the vaccination uh, against COVID-19, here in the hospital, what we can see is that about 90% of the health personnel have been vaccinated. Uh, those who have not been vaccinated are those who presented some comorbidities or those who have been tested positive, so they couldn't have the vaccine. And in cases where uh, you had some health personnel who were tested positive for the coronavirus, how were they managed, how were they taken care of here? Most of them, if not all, have been managed at home. Yes, because all of them didn't present any severe case, any aggravated symptoms, so we decided to manage them at home. And are there uh, other opportunities whereby the remaining 10% of those who have not yet been vaccinated to get vaccinated anytime soon? Yes. <clears throat> the remaining 10% are going to be vaccinated when they are going to be tested again. See if they are not yet since they are since, uh, negative or positive, see what we can do. So it depends on their positivity or negativity. So that's what you have to do. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Ndo Akoto, a general practitioner here at the Nanga Eboko District Hospital. They preach by example. They don't just advise Cameroonians to have themselves vaccinated against the coronavirus. They themselves have themselves vaccinated on a daily basis. It is a take home message from the Nanga Eboko District Hospital. Back to you, Freddy Tabiso. Thank you very much, uh, Baldwin. And on to sports now, a Daya Success Club. And Emejang Cricket Club of uh, Yaoundé have emerged winners of the men's and women's national championship in cricket. Both selections were crowned at the end of the finals today in Yaoundé to mark the end of the cricket season for the year in Cameroon. The Indian High Commissioner to Cameroon, His Excellency Kakesh Mahogtra, attended the Games. Details with Romeo Nkenyi. Success club were simply the strongest in the men's game when playing Cup Pioneers of Yaoundé. Both teams earned 75 runs at regular time, but they have got more records following innings emanating from Dolis to back home the championship title. The win implies they have now become Cameroon's Cup winners of the 2021 edition. The atmosphere has been very, very good, you know, and it is good to be here to see how cricket has been promoted in Cameroon. It was a close match and and uh, Yaoundé won, so I would like to congratulate them. Emergence Cricket Club stamped authority in the women's series, finishing championship winners, likewise clinching the National Challenge Cup trophy. Individual performances, like best players in the women and men's games, went home with recognitions. In attendance was Cameroon's president of Olympic and Sports Committee, Colonel Kakaba Marbum. I am happy that cricket is also um, making Cameroonian young people happy. They're is passion in, in them and it is exploding through cricket so I can only be a, a happy president at the level of the Cameroon Cricket Federation we are very happy that we have at least um, after two years you know from hibernation we can at least organize a successful tournament which is ending in the grand style. This year the teams were selected from all 10 regional headquarters. <laughs> On a countdown to the upcoming Olympic Games tonight, we focus on one of Cameroon's boxers, Menge Ayisi. He, he occupied the seventh position during the 2019 All-African Games in Rabat, Morocco, and has been training in Hita City, Japan, ahead of the competition. Baldwin Sama in the following report looks at the chances of the boxer. 
He considers himself as one of the country's finest boxers after Wilfried Sei Mungu Aisi slowly but surely is writing his name in the country's boxing history book. Age 22, Mungu Aisi, who boxes in the men's welterweight category, was ninth during the 2019 All African Games in Rabat, Morocco. He boxes with the Copacabana Boxing Club in Yaoundé and hopes to impress during the upcoming Olympic Games. We know our work with our national coach. We are confident we will be the best and secure medals for Cameroon. I call on my fans to pray for me to be able to win an Olympic medal. Mungo Aisi secured his qualification tickets for Tokyo 2020 during the boxing qualifiers in Dakar, Senegal last year and trains alongside his other teammates in Hita City, Japan, telling signs of how determined he is to make the nation proud. And that report wraps our newscast uh, tonight. Uh, tomorrow you'll be in the company of Gladys Tata. Thanks for watching. Good night and catch you again some other time. Malgré nos efforts, despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. Thank you.